Hi again, everyone, and welcome to our final four edition of Badger Breakdown brought to you by U.S. Cellular. I'm Mike Lucas from UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by the voice of the Badgers, Matt LePay. Before we talk about Duke, Wisconsin, we have to go back to the final five minutes of that game between the Badgers and unbeaten Kentucky and what the Badgers did during that span to win a yet another game at the close. What they did is what they've been doing throughout the postseason, and that's just owning the final five minutes, shooting at a high clip, hitting three-point shots when they take it, knocking down their free throws when they need to do it. The separator here was nobody had done that yet against Kentucky this season, but really from the Wisconsin perspective, this is what the Badgers have, have specialized in, you could say, in postseason. And when I say that, I include the Big Ten tournament. If it's close in the final five, they know what to do, and they have done it to this point to perfection. We said it afterwards. I don't think it was an upset. You can debate that as long as you want. But what we found is that Wisconsin can play with a Kentucky, and the better team on that night just happened to be the Badgers. Yeah, I, I guess it would be it would go down as a, as a mild upset. Kentucky was favored by a few points and had not lost. But as we said before the game, this was not miracle on ice. This wasn't the the scrubby group of Team USA hockey players playing the you know the unbeatable, seemingly unbeatable Russians. This is. This is a Wisconsin team that went into the game 35 and three, and now is 36 and three, and was one of the teams that those without a dog in the fight suggested could be one of the teams that could beat Kentucky. So, yeah, at most mild upset, great game though, a classic game, and one I'm sure they'll be replaying for years and years. And the Badgers have now completed their NC2A tournament hat trick, having played the same three teams a year later. Oregon, Arizona, and Kentucky. And now we have yet another redo, a rematch with Duke. Yeah, which is, I think, great because the obvious question is how do you regroup after an emotionally charged victory in the Final Four against a team that hadn't lost yet and, oh, by the way, you got to play again? Well, A, it's for the national championship, so that would get you geared up anyway. And, and the other thing is they have played Duke and they lost to Duke at home. Duke was the only team to come into Madison and beat the Badgers this year. Both coaches and I think the teams, the players have suggested that both are different now than what they were in early December. And I think that's true. And I think at the same time, both teams are better now than what we saw in early December. Now, it was an 80 to 70 game. Duke shot lights out. But they're better, but I believe the Badgers are too. Duke set a Cole Center record by shooting 65%, over 70% in the second half. The team has changed in terms of personnel, for one, Suleiman, who came off the bench against Wisconsin and, and scored big, is no longer a member of, this, of the cast. Yeah, he is, he is gone. They had one other player who transferred, but yet other players have gotten much better. The freshman class now, they're, they're playing like veterans. They, a lot of them played like veterans that night in Madison, but Justice Winslow, for instance, he was fairly quiet in the game against Wisconsin but he has really turned it up a notch or two or three here over the last probably month or more for Duke. He's another player, you know, we talked about this with Willie Cauley-Stein, who could guard every position. Winslow isn't as big. He's listed at 6'6", but he can guard every position. This Duke team defensively, I think, if you're looking for where it's been better, Winslow clearly on the offensive end. But what he does and what the rest of that team does on the defensive end, that's been a difference and a, a marked improved uh, area of, of Duke's game. And since the start of the season, two players have been at the core of any discussion about the national player of the year, and now they get a chance to play again, and that's Okafor and Kaminsky. Yeah, part two, and they are. there's a lot of respect, I would think, for, for each other. They're a little bit different. I think uh, Frank is going to be a little bit different in how he plays from a lot of a uh, lot of other bigs because of his ability to go outside, put the ball on the floor. Okafor can be more of that dominant force down on the on the low block. He doesn't shoot free throws very well. Frank shoots free throws extremely well. People talk about the differences maybe defensively between the two, but look, they're both really good. Okafor is going to go really early in the NBA draft, and I think you know Frank's in a pretty good spot too. It's one of the many intriguing matchups, but again, we're talking about a game where any of the 10 on the floor can be that guy who makes a big play or just has that really big game. And Sam Decker talked about it here today that he was nowhere close to being 100%. Uh, when the teams met in early December, 
he, he looked slow. And that was Decker's own assessment of his play then, and he's been one of the hottest players, if not the hottest player in March. Yeah, even Mike Krzyzewski in, in the news conference on Sunday talked about that. I say, look, you know, that was a great win for, for Duke that night going into Madison. That was their first road game of the season and a first road game period, obviously, for that freshman class. But he also knew that, okay, Decker's not quite, he's not 100%. Nigel Hayes had a very quiet night that night against Duke. But Sam right now is putting together a tournament that will go down as one of the more memorable ones maybe for an individual in, in the history of this event right now with his ability to hit the really big shots. He's scoring 20 plus a game. You know, Frank's not doing too bad either. You're <laughs> talking about carving a niche, but Decker's the timeliness of that shot, the three late, the step back three against Kentucky, and not to mention all the other things he did. Um, he's going to put himself on the list of one, I think, one of those real NCAA tournament stars that, again, people are going to be talking about for many, many years. And we'll share some of our keys. I feel like the Badgers have to do a really good job on Duke's guards. Uh, Titus Jones uh, led the team in scoring the last time they played and to bring Matt Jones into the game. And they're very good and they're very active. Yep, and Quinn Cook, who's uh, he's one of the veterans. Uh, they don't have a ton of them, but he's the guy who, uh, you know, when talking to some of the Duke folks that about the growth of these younger players, well, Quinn Cook's had a lot to do with that. And, oh, by the way, he can score 15 points a game as well. This is a team that will drive the ball. They'll shoot their threes. There are three or four players who can be very dangerous from the three-point line for Duke but they will also drive the ball. And they, they got a lot done inside the arc against Michigan State. So that Badger defense is really going to be challenged. A little different kind of challenge maybe in some ways, but a very real challenge against a, a Duke offense that can be pretty potent. I'm not sure I f ever believed that I'd be standing here in a locker room like this where the road finally ends with a championship game in Wisconsin would be one of the participants. Game number 40 of the season for the Badgers. No, I, the good news, though, is it's their hashtag, make them believe. I think these guys honestly thought that they had the goods to get here. The path has been enormously difficult. Uh, the teams they have had to beat. Uh, along the way with, with Oregon and the game with North Carolina, Arizona, Kentucky. Those are some big boy programs that, that Wisconsin has taken care of. But you know what? Wisconsin's a big boy program too. And to be on this final stage, they, they stay loose somehow, some way. They're up there giggling like 12-year-olds in the news conference. It served them well. So keep giggling. They've been all business when it counts. Yeah. And, and now they're 40 minutes, maybe a little bit more away from <laughs> A national championship. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. And the way you phrase that, uh, if it takes 45 <laughs> or whatever, whatever nothing, nothing surprises takes. me now. For Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching our national championship edition of Badger Breakdown, brought to you by U.S. Cellular.